Hey dudes, visual art connecting the world.
my outlet, if you will, uh, is running and being active. And so I knew that I was fast. Once I got to grade school and uh, was running with some of the other uh, my classmates, um, and actually my best friend was a guy. He was really smart. Um, his name was Martin Smithshaw. Um, he would always run in his C7. He would always um, try to beat me, but I would beat him. So that's kind of, again, how things got started around me. Um, several years later, I um, would go to Flage uh, track down in the West End with my mom while she would walk around the track and exercise. And so this particular day, we ran into uh, a man by the name of William Underwood. And uh, she told him that my daughter, this is my daughter, she loves to run, and she might want to uh, join the team. And so he said, well, let's see. Uh, and so at the time, he uh, was coaching his daughter, his nephew, and uh, their friends, a couple of their friends. Um, and so my first day out, it was a little rough, but uh, I still enjoyed it nevertheless. Um, and so again, I ended up uh, joining the team. Uh, that team was called the West Side Track Club, um, which is uh, still operating until this day. And that was 38, 39 years ago, I think. Um, and so, yeah, that really started my journey um, in what I like to call uh, life, liberty, and um, this the state of, you know, track and field for me that, that really opened up a lot of doors for me and um, I could actually say it raised me in a sense. Um, so I joined the West Side Track Club. Thereafter, um, probably sixth grade or so, I was still running, uh, joined West Side as an AAU uh, summer league team and I ran on that every summer. Um, by this time, I was 14 years old, and I was invited to a track meet in uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania. And that invite was for 13 and 14 year olds, um, and I was one of those invited out of the state of Kentucky. And so that was my first time ever being on an airplane by myself. And so um, I went to that track meet, and I participated in the long jump and the and I did very well, I'm very successful, and came back uh, here home. And again, that that really allowed me to see, hey, maybe maybe this is something that I could do, uh, you know, hereafter. Maybe something that I could do to earn a scholarship. And so again, I wasn't uh, necessarily there wasn't really necessarily something that um, I saw myself doing, but again, as I began to be successful with it, it opened up more doors for me. Um, by this time, I was the next year, 15 years old, um, I attended Valley High School. And uh, my coach, William uh, Underwood, again, he challenged me. Um, he saw in me some things that I didn't see in myself. Um, he pushed me uh, to my very limit, and so did my uh, teammates. And uh, from then on, they, uh, after that, I um, made it to the state track meet as a freshman in high school. And I competed in um, the long jump, which I won as a freshman. And I was also on relay teams and also participated in other events. And so throughout my high school career, um, I um, won the track meet every year um, while I was in high school. So that was four years in a row that I was able to win uh, the long jump. Um, I also participated in other events, the 200 meter dash, and, and I won that. And um, again, also transitioned from the 100 meters to the 100 meter hurdles. And I think for the 100 meter hurdles, that's my love. It challenged me because I was told that I was not a hurdler. Um, and again, I, I kind of got bored with the 100 and I needed more of a challenge than a push. And so the hurdles was that for me. And I ended up um, in the Mason-Dixon Games. It's an indoor track meet that we 
uh, at one point uh, hosted here in the state of Kentucky or here in Louisville at Broadbent Arena. And I said, hey, coach, you know, would it be possible if I could run the, the hurdles? And he, you know, kind of looked back at me and said, well, I don't know. Let's go see if you could run them, see how you do, see how you feel. So I said, okay. So I went down and went over a couple of hurdles. And I said, well, I think I can do it. So he's like, okay, then we'll switch you from the, the straight uh, 60 meter or 50 mile, 5 meter at that time it was. To, we'll switch you to the 55 year hurdles. And so I said, okay, great. And so um, successfully, again, I competed um, in the 55 year hurdles. I broke the record uh, my first time running it. And from then on out, the hurdle was my race. I loved it uh, so much um, that um, I wanted to come. Fully, completely, and just the hundred meter hurdles at that point part of my choice. So that started again my hurdle journey, um, and um, with that again I gained a lot of notoriety across the nation um, and, and other um, meets uh, nationally with uh, with under the Westside Track Club and the AAU. And I was invited to several other track meets. Um, one being the junior um, TAC or TAC, will be called TAC meet. And that uh, meet was hosted in Columbus, Ohio. And I was very excited to go because um, the top two spots in that particular track meet was then going to be able to make the US junior national team. And so, very excited, very nervous, you know, little girl from Kentucky, the West End of Louisville, like who's ever heard of Kentucky? You know, they have horse racing in Kentucky. They don't have uh, track athletes there in Kentucky. And so, and actually that was some of the response that I got back from, you know, some individuals um, who ended up making the team. Well, new form. Um, I was very confident in the training that I had done. I was very confident in myself to be able to compete with uh, the nation's best. And so um, I competed in the 100 meter hurdles and also the long jump. And so in both events, I placed second, um, both behind collegiate athletes. And so they awarded me a spot on the 1992 Junior Olympic team. And so, again, that was very exciting for me, um, exciting for uh, the city of Louisville, exciting for West Side Track Club, exciting for, you know, my family and uh, definitely my coaches and, and those who I was going to represent, um, again, for the state of Kentucky. So it was a very exciting time for me. Um, and so, from then on, we then had a dual track meet against Canada, and thereafter that Canada meet, we were able to compete uh, internationally um, in Seoul, South Korea. And so as a senior in high school, um, 18 years old, um, took my first trip overseas to South Korea, and that was, I had the time of my life. Um, meeting different ones from the team nationally and even internationally um, again and I would see those people um, throughout my track career and so I had um, so many um, college offers really I had my choice at wherever I wanted to go um, and as overwhelming as that was um, I wanted to make sure that number one uh, my family would be able to come see me, although I wanted to go south or where it was hot and warm. Down in Florida, that's actually where I was intending to go um, until my grandmother posed this question to me. Um, she said, well, who's going to take care of you when you get sick? And so I kind of thought about that. I was like, well, she, she's got a point there. So um, what ended up happening was, again, I had a choice to go wherever I wanted to go. LSU uh, Tigers, they were forced to be reckoned with in uh, the Southeastern Conference. 
um, Tennessee, um, USC. I had letters from Brown and Harvard and I mean across the nation and so what ended up helping me make my decision was um, the team that actually came to see me personally. You know, that, that really uh, meant a lot to me. So there were three teams who actually came to see me personally, came to meet my parents, came to my house, or came to attract me. And um, also, what made a huge difference for me was my parents, my family being able to be close enough to be able to come to my needs. And so, again, that led me to make my decision to attend the Ohio State University. Um, and for other, several other reasons, there was also another track athlete from Louisville. Her name is Stephanie Hightower. She was from Louisville, and she also ran for me. And uh, I remember taking my visit, which was the only visit I ever took. Um, and so for those of you who don't know, as, a, as an athlete, you are allowed five visits to colleges. And so Ohio State was the only visit I took. Um, and I did not look back from that again because um, coach from coach from the Ohio State University came to see me personally. Um, I've never been coached by a woman, and I was very um, impressed by Coach Mandy Rollins' uh, resume herself. She um, didn't go to school until her late thirties. And she was a very successful um, trailblazer in the hurdles as well. She also um, made it to the Olympics um, in 19, I believe it was 1972 or 1980, at the, at the you know, September age of 30. But for some of us, that's old. But I was very impressed with her resume. And also, again, she coached Stephanie Hightower and that really kind of solidified that decision for me. I wanted to be coached by the best, and um, and I wanted to also um, be challenged. And I knew, and I felt it in my heart that Mamie would be able to do that again, knowing that Stephanie uh, Hightower had come through Ohio State as well. That meant a lot, and so did also Jesse Owens. And for those of you who know who Jesse Owens uh, is and the accomplishments that um, he made in the Berlin Olympics again um, really spoke volumes to me and so um, I didn't look back I wanted to make sure that my mark was made um, with the good the great um, tradition and heritage that the Ohio State University had so my decision was solidified and I went there um, and it was it was different. It was challenging. Um, my first year, I actually struggled because um, you know making the transition from high school to college. You know, you, you think you're ready, and I just really was not ready um, um, from the standpoint of having the freedoms that I had, and again making that jump. And so I had a lot of setbacks academically. Was one of them. Um, one being because uh, during the, the stint of when I traveled to um, Korea on the US Junior National Team, I didn't arrive to school until nine days later. And so with that, um, I didn't get my classes until nine days later, so I was already behind. And that really got me off track. Um, and I dealt with a lot of mental health issues um, in re regards to, I dealt with some depression um, while there during that time because I really wanted to do well. And uh, I knew that my family and friends and my community expected a lot from me. Um, but I kept pushing through. Um, I kept pushing through because I knew that that was something that I wanted. I wanted definitely to um, get my college education. I wanted to get my degree because um, my sisters and brothers had all went away to um, college and they did not graduate. So I wanted to be the first one uh, in my family to do so. And so I pushed 
through that situation and then came um, with, with track, um, I had an injury that I had to, to, to kind of nurse uh, myself back into uh, some type of shape and so I had to go to therapy with that. And at that time, I was supposed to have been scheduled to come back home um, to run in uh, the Mason Dixon games as a freshman. My coach said she would allow me to do that, um, although the other, uh, the rest of the team was going somewhere else. And so, with the setback, with the injury, I was not uh, able to compete. And so, um, I ended up having to be redshirted. And again, another setback or another hurdle, right? Um, and so, again, I kept pushing through, kept pushing through. Um, so I was prepared to then run um, outdoor season. Um, but because of the injury, because of how long it took me to get um, healed through therapy, um, I ended up having, a, again, red shirt the remainder of the year. Another hurdle, right? But in hindsight, when I look at it, it ended up really being a blessing in disguise because I was able to then focus on my academics and um, really understand um, being able to uh, kind of deal with some of uh, you know college responsibilities, right, with academics and athletics, and just kind of being able to balance that out. So that year, my whole freshman year, again, I. To sit out, which was a blessing, and uh, get my life back on track and, and be able to um, be in a position come next year where I will be ready um, academically and athletically to be able to perform uh, as I needed to. And so, um, because of that, again, my grades set back, um, I had to attend summer school. Being a freshman, um, being in my first year, being that I had an injury, then I had to sit out, again, here comes another hurdle. So I had to go to summer school my first year um, so that I would be eligible come the following year. And so um, that was rough too, just not being able to be, be at home, come home, enjoy my family, and see my friends, and you know, take that summer off again to kind of get some respite from all that had transpired my freshman year, but again, it was a blessing because, um, you know, that summer I was able to, again, um, bring my focus back in, right, to what really my purpose was um, for me to be there, which was to get my education um, initially. Um, they don't call us student athletes for nothing, right? So, but I really believe that um, for me, one without the other, just, you know, um, was going to be difficult. So again, push through that moment. So by my the second year, which was my sophomore year, but uh, athletically, it was my freshman year, I was ready. Right? My second year, I was so ready. I was so ready, so ready um, to do what I came to do on the track and definitely be academic and chase. So that year um, was again a little transition because the coach who recruited me, um, Coach Ross, um, ended up being let go from the university. That was another hurdle uh, for me. Uh, she was not there to coach me. And so I'm thinking, okay, now what do I do? Um, my mom said, well, you can come back home. And I said, um, no, I don't think I want to do that. Um, so I stayed. Uh, you know, push through, and um, by the end of the outdoor season, you know, I was so frustrated with what I had gone through uh, the year before that I was, again, I was ready. Kind of bored with a uh, long jump, and so I asked my jump coach, I said, hey coach, do you think I could triple jump? And so that was another event that I had not been really exposed to. Um, outside of just um, doing some of the drills and practice, right? And so he said, well, well why not? Yeah, sure, let's, let's go for it, let's try it. And so practice the triple jump, 
you know, drills and practice. I did, I was ready. And so the, the, the actual first meet I was gonna be able to compete in the triple jump was at the Big Ten Conference. And this is a huge meet, um, you know, that we all prepared for all year. It was outdoor season. I love outdoors. I love being out in the heat. And so I was ready. This was my debut um, at Wisconsin at the Big Ten Conference. And so uh, my first jump, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what am I doing? I'm running down the, the, the runway. And so I hit my spot and landed in the sand. And I heard the crowd go, wow. Didn't know, you know, how far I had jumped. You know, they were measuring. And so when they said, uh, you know, Smith's jump, or I'm sorry, excuse me, Boyd's jump was 43-2. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And so... That was a record-breaking performance for me. And again, um, that was something that I really challenged myself to do and was excited about it. And so again, just like the, me introducing myself to the hurdles, I introduced myself to something new and different with the triple jump. And so I knew from then on that the triple jump would be something that I would be um, good at. And so that stuck with me as well. So. From then on out, I ended up um, doing well, considerably well, in both the hurdles and the triple jump. And out of my college career, um, I ended up being a seven-time Big Ten champion in the hurdles, um, the triple jump, and also I won a championship in the long jump. And within that time period, I was also a four-time All-American both the, the long jump and the hurdles. And so um, I was also invited to uh, participate in the 1996 Olympic trials, which I almost didn't do it just because I felt like uh, I really wanted to go in the, in the hurdles and be invited to, to run. But however, I was invited to participate in the triple jump. And so um, I said, I'll go ahead and do it. And that actually, really opened my eyes up to the possibility that maybe I do have a future um, beyond college in track and field or what's called on the, on the circuit or running professionally. So I'm glad that I said yes to the opportunity uh, to uh, compete at the trials, the Olympic trials in 1996 in Atlanta, um, just because of the, the exposure of seeing the athletes and just seeing the possibilities and seeing just how far I could actually go. And so I came back after that um, that event and I was ready. I was ready. Um, I was ready for my senior year. Like, you know, I, I began to write my goals down before the year started. Um, my goal, one of my goals was to, to uh, have a personal record every time I ran like that was my record I wrote it down I write, wrote down the times that I wanted to run and by the end of the season I had a specific time that I wanted to meet um, at the end of uh, my senior year because right this is the senior year and I wanted to go out on top in the right way and so every weekend every race I um, bettered my time from previously and again just writing that vision um, really helped me uh, put it into into play right really helped me accomplish those goals and so I was very excited because uh, for those of you who don't know so the 100 meter hurdles is um, in order to to really be on the circuit and run professionally you would have to run under 13 seconds and that's pretty fast like at that time um, Gail Devers had the record and she ran up uh, 12-4, I believe. And so my last meet, collegiate meet, I was able to accomplish that goal. I ran under 13 seconds. And again, my prospects of being able to run professionally, being able to acquire an agent to be uh, able to help me do that, um, the stakes were getting a little bit you know, higher. I was you know, very excited about the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, and so, um, my last meet, I believe I was invited to what's called the, the Senior uh, U.S. Nationals, um, 
and also running against some professional athletes as well in that race. Um, however, um, wasn't as successful, but it was a lesson learned. Um, I hit a hurdle, um, and that really just kind of stopped the race for me. But it didn't stop me from pursuing my professional career. And so I did um, acquire an agent and um, also got sponsorship by um, uh, the Japanese company Mizuno and was able to, uh, again, facilitate, were able to facilitate some meets for me internationally. Um, I've run all over the world from um, Peru to Rio de Janeiro, um, to Brazil, um, Germany, Italy, I ran in Spain, Greece, and um, just an awesome, awesome, awesome experience. And when I look back on all the things that I was able to accomplish uh, with track and field, just me being able to be open to just saying yes to whatever came my way, right? Um, because I could have said, you know, no, I don't want to go, or no, this is not especially when I really didn't know which way I wanted to go with it. Um, but just saying yes to it and then just seeing what, what comes after that um, was really, really, really something that um, I can honestly say I would take back for the world. I, you know, I joke about it all the time and I say, you know, my feet took me, you know, across the world, you know, in places that I would have never being able to do on my own, I never would have thought um, that I would have been able to uh, have been um, to those places and traveled to those places and seen the different cultures and experiencing the different cultures and meeting other people from different countries and speaking different languages who, you know, I was able to uh, establish some friendships with, right? You know, lasting, longing friendships with from those individuals and so again that was an awesome awesome time in my life um, and and now that I talk about it it's it, it inspires me I don't talk about it as much as I probably need to um, just because uh, you know just being on the one guess but it's sometimes hard to believe that I was able to accomplish that but I can honestly say that it was God's doing it was um, you know, it was not really of me. He blessed me with the gift of the fast feet, right? Um, and that gift and that talent afforded me so many opportunities, not just 20 years ago when I was able to do it, but even now, you know, 20 years later, I am still um, able to uh, see the manifestation of the gifts and the talents that God blessed me. Um, with um, now being um, a five-time Hall of Famer. Um, I've been inducted into the Ohio State um, University's Athletic Hall of Fame. Um, I've been inducted into Valley High School Hall of Fame. I've been inducted to USA Track and Cross Country um, Association Hall of Fame. I've also been inducted to the, to the Mason Dixon um, Hall of Fame. And so. You know, again, as, as I, I'm sitting here saying that, it's just like, wow, you did that? Like, honestly, you did that. Like, um, and again, I don't, it's not anything of me, but again, it's just a blessing to be able to, um, you know, be able to have uh, the ability uh, to be able to do those things, accomplish those things. Again, not of me, but everything I owe to God, because if it wasn't for him and him looking after me, um, in some of those places and him making sure that I get through this process and even graduating, right? I graduated college, right? Um, that to me is inspiring because of uh, some of the hurdles that I faced to be able to, to sit here before you today. Um, again, not without challenges at all, not without dealing with some of those consequences of you know, some of the decisions that I have made, but just sitting here to say I survived all of that um, and I was able to do that and uh, be able to have a different outlook on life and a different perspective uh, to share, right? To share my, my journey with others is uh, something that now I'm ready to do um, because I, I, I see the full circle 
now and that uh, being able to inspire and motivate and influence others, really that's how the world turns, right? Because if it had not been for um, some others that came before me, um, you know, you've got your Jackie Joanna Kersey. Again, she was, uh, you know, one of my uh, idols or mentors. Um, Stephanie Hightower, of course, and Mamie Rollins and uh, the Jesse Owens. They inspired me, right? And so now it's my time to inspire others, inspire other young ladies and girls across um, the, the, my community and the city to be able to say, if I'm a Hall of Famer, you can definitely be a Hall of Famer too. So I'm ready to share my journey and my, and my story. So when I talk about the um, impact that track and field has um, had on my life um, and the wonderful things that uh, I'm able to still um, kind of accomplish in my life, um, one of the biggest things right now um, that I'm working on and a part of is with um, the Louisville Urban League is where I am employed and I work in community health um, as what's called a community health navigator. And so um, at this point, we have won a bid um, for a plot of land on 30th and Muhammad Ali, 24 acres of ground field. Um, and I am pleased and privileged and honored, um, honored to be a part of a committee that will be building an indoor an outdoor track facility. Um, and this facility will bring, um, will be such a catalyst of change to the area uh, of West End and also the city of Louisville. So again, this facility, the indoor facility, will be a 4,000 seated uh, hydraulic track facility um, that we will be able to host uh, regional and national events. And so again, uh, we are looking for this to bring economic, uh, a huge economic impact to the West End of Louisville, um, to the community as well. And it's a very exciting journey. Um, being able to meet with different ones, um, um, some local uh, individuals um, as well as national individuals to be able to assist us in uh, making this dream uh, become possible. And so, um, how the track came forward is uh, the Little Urban League hosted a, a community event and asked the community to come in to discuss some things that they would like to see in their community. And out of that meeting, um, and out of those individuals who attended, um, a sports com uh, complex was what uh, the community wanted. And so that's how uh, this plan, this dream became possible. And again, it's an awesome thing really to be a part of. And again, I'm privileged to be a part of it and to be able to share my story and how track has, um, again, uh, helped me um, in my journey as well as it will help others. Um, the track and field facility will not only be uh, for track, um, there's a bigger picture to, to, to that. Um, and so it will serve as a multi-purpose uh, event space. So during um, track season, um, the track will be used for that, but outside of the track season, the indoor facility will be used for other events. Um, so we're, we're looking at it uh, being able to host uh, concerts and other national sporting events, um, again, to bring the revenue inside uh, of the community. Um, and again, it's, it's just something that uh, I believe the West End has never seen before. Um, and again, it's very exciting to see it come to fruition right in our, in, in our backyard. Um, and it's very exciting, again, to be a part of this, um, this plan, this dream. And again, it's much bigger than that. Um, and as of right now, the facility is now called uh, the Norton Sports Health um, Athletic and Learning Complex. So not only will it be for athletic events, it will also um, be for education. We'll have health education classes and things of that nature, again, to educate the community 
about um, how to be, you know, healthy and, and live a, a better lifestyle. Um, so again, that's something that's near and dear to my heart is health. And again, I'm just excited to be um, thought of. I'm, I'm excited to be a part of this um, huge, huge project. And I'm grateful um, that, um, again, I could be of assistance in these, in these, in these, in these efforts. And so um, we have uh, we broke ground already um, as of August of 2019. The ground field um, has been cleared. And if you visit it today, you can actually see um, the structures going up. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. Um, every process, uh, every stage of this project coming um, to life, and uh, and I'm very excited for the community of Louisville. I'm excited for um, the West End. I'm excited for those who will be able to utilize uh, the facility and be able to again um, bring uh, life and hope and inspiration and motivation. Uh, to an area of uh, Louisville that has been uh, disenfranchised, that has been uh, disinvested in for years. Um, and, and, and again, it's a beautiful thing, it's growth. Um, and again, I believe it's going to, to really change uh, many people's lives. And that's really what it's all about, right? At the end of the day, um, my purpose in life is to be able to um, change, right? Um, be uh, the solution, be part of the solution and not part of the problem. Um, and I think, again, that's really what makes the world turn. And I'm excited to be a part of it. Um, and again, we're expected for thousands of people, thousands of athletes, thousands of families to come into our city, to come into the West End, to be able to um, share in this awesome project and be able to use it and, and to be able to be inspired by it. Um, and again, I talk about uh, and being inspired a lot, but um, and I think again for the kids who um, have not had uh, the choices um, that many other children have had um, in the city of Louisville and in our community, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be magnificent. Right. It, it's gonna change. Um, it's gonna just change the um, the perspective of a lot of the kids uh, who have not had opportunities, and that's what we're expecting. A lot of opportunities for those kids who will be able to utilize the space um, to 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 be able to have choices um, with whether it's with their athletic. Um, um, you know, uh, progress or their development, um, but again, for their aspirations, for them to be able to, you know, tap into scholarships and things of that nature that, um, something that they may not have thought about before. So I'm very excited about being part of this project. And again, I'm honored and blessed uh, that God chose me, right? He chose me to do this. He chose me um, to uh, have the gift of loving, and he chose me um, to make a change, um, not only in myself, but in um, my community. We need you to come join us on this awesome journey to finish this project. So please, if you will, contact us on our website at www.lul.org or you can find us on Facebook. Come run with us.